Putin may prepare nuclear strike on Ukraine from Belarus. As a result of nuclear exercises conducted by Russia and Belarus, it is likely that tactical nuclear missiles will strike the territory of Ukraine, according to Charter 97 media outlet. It is noted that Belarus joined Russia in the second stage of nuclear exercises. Russian President Vladimir Putin stated this in Moscow. According to him, the relevant instruction was given to the ministries of defense and the general staffs of the two countries. This time, they are held in three stages. At the second stage, Belarusian counterparts will join our joint actions, he stressed. Belarusian President Lukashenko confirmed this and stressed that the first stage of the country's nuclear exercises was held separately, but we decided that we should synchronize and hold the second and third stages together. Lukashenko said, according to him, the general staff have already begun it. On May the 6th, Russia began preparations for the exercises of missile formations of the Southern Military District and the Navy soon. It is planned to work out issues of the use of non-strategic nuclear weapons. In addition, we recall that back in 2023, Russia launched ships with tactical nuclear weapons into the sea. Charter 97 media outlet says that past major Russian-Belarusian exercises in early 2022 led to a large-scale Russian offensive in Ukraine, including from the territory of Belarus. It is possible that during these joint nuclear exercises, tactical nuclear missiles may strike Ukraine. Possible place of strikes is in the west of Ukraine in order to stop the supply of weapons to the Ukrainian army within the framework of American and European assistance. It is noted that the underestimation of threats in the past, the attempt to consider Russian-Belarusian militaristic measures a bluff, has already led to disastrous consequences. It is possible to argue with experts how expedient and effective such a step is from a military point of view, but the fact that two insane elderly dictators in the war against Ukraine are ready to take any, even the most insane, steps is obvious. Recall that the famous American analyst and historian Yuri Felshtinsky has long been warning about the likelihood of attacks from the territory of Belarus on neighboring countries. Charter 97 media outlet says that the threat of nuclear strikes from the territory of Belarus significantly increases the likelihood of retaliatory strikes against military facilities and decision-making centers in the Republic of Belarus, including two Russian military bases, the communication center of the Russian Navy in Vileka and the radar station between Baranavishi and Hansavishi, which are actively used by Russia in the war against Ukraine. Israel receives a lot of other weapons from U.S. despite embargo on bombs. Despite the delay by the U.S. presidential administration in delivering one batch of bombs, Israel continues to receive other types of American weapons worth billions of dollars. 
According to Reuters, Senator Jim Risch, the top Republican on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, noted that despite the U.S. administration's refusal to deliver bombs worth tens of millions of dollars, a wide range of other military equipment is expected to be delivered to Israel. Among them are joint direct attack munitions, which convert dumb bombs into precision-guided weapons as well as tank shells, mortars and armored tactical vehicles. According to Risch, these munitions are not moving through the approval process as quickly as they should. He noted that some of them have been in the works since December, while aid to Israel typically goes through the review process within a few weeks. Meanwhile, Gregory Meeks, top Democrat on the House of Representatives Foreign Affairs Committee, has halted the transfer of an $18 billion arms package to Israel, which includes dozens of Boeing Company F-15 aircraft. He is currently awaiting additional information on how Israel will use them. Rish and Meeks are two of the four American lawmakers who oversee major arms sales abroad. These actions in Congress are authorized by the heads and members of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee as well as the heads of the members of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. None of these deals are part of the spending package signed by Biden in April, which includes $26 billion in support for Israel and humanitarian assistance. Senator Chris Murphy, chairman of the Subcommittee on Near East, South Asia, Central Asia and Counterterrorism from the Democratic Party, expressed concern to Reuters about the fate of Rafa. I do not think it is our strategic or moral interest to help Israel conduct a campaign in Rafa that is likely to kill thousands of innocent civilians and not likely impact Hamas's long-term strength in a meaningful way, he said.